Now, welcome to a brand new episode of Count It right here on Points Bet. I'm your host, Kazim Fami. We today talking all things hoops, whether it's the NBA, college, all that good stuff. You know where to get it right here on Points Bet USA. Obviously, joining me later today will be the prop queen, Ariel Epstein, giving you everything you need to know to cash in on those props tonight on the NBA slate. But first, you know what we got to do? We got to check out everything that happened last night in the league. And I got to start off with a good old dose of favoritism because my New York Knicks got it done last night against the Indiana Pacers in what turned out to be a closer game than any Knicks fan wanted it to be. I mean, it was so much storylines going into this game. I mean, you got a battle of two players that are looking to be first-time All-Stars this year at the point guard position between Tyrese Halliburton, who is currently leading the league in assists, and Jalen Brunson, who's been an absolute godsend. For any Knicks fan who has been dying for a point guard for the past, I don't know, 20, 25 years, it seems like. But, man, it did not disappoint if you're a New York Knicks fan. Besides Jalen Brunson, besides Tyrese Halliburton, last night the Knicks welcomed back R.J. Barrett, and he looked like he did not miss a beat coming out. After missing the past several games with 27 points, 9 for 23 from the field, 4 for 12 from 3, had an absolutely sensational game. Strong start for the Duke product by way of Toronto, Canada. But uh, it was an incredible game for the New York Knicks. They went up by as many as 25 points at one point in this game. And here's one thing we've known about the Knicks so far, and not just the Knicks. It's one thing you seem to know about every team in the NBA. When it comes to pace, when it comes to scoring, when it comes to just the way the game's been played over the past several seasons, no lead is safe in this league. And even though the Knicks were up by 25 points, the Indiana Pacers did end up cutting it down to one point behind the shooting of Buddy Heald and TJ McConnell. However... Tyrese Halliburton did end up leaving the game just a little bit early with a sore knee. Uh, Apparently, reports have come out that he left the game in crutches, which, if you're an Indiana Pacers fan, can't be a good sign because Tyrese Halliburton has played like an absolute stud all season long. But let's get back to this game. Obviously, there was a ton of storylines going into it. I'm at MSG Networks a lot, so... You heard about the Wally Zerbiak comments with Tyrese Halliburton calling him a fake all-star and Tyrese Halliburton firing back at him. You already know, if you're a Knicks fan, the long and storied rivalry between the Knicks and the Pacers. And now bringing it back to 2023, the Knicks and the Pacers are 6th and 7th respectively in the Eastern Conference playoff race. And yesterday marked the official start on the second half of the NBA season. So this game carried lots of long-term implications for the Eastern Conference and where playoff seedings might end up and, uh, uh, spilling out when it comes to the end of the year. But let's talk about Tyrese Halliburton. Like I said earlier in this uh, show, 21 points, 10 assists on the season so far. But last night he was getting off to another all-star type of start, man. Six for 12 from the field. He was one for five from three, but he still had seven assists, three rebounds before he went down with a knee injury. But the night was all about Jalen Brunson. He has continued to be an absolute stud for the New York Knicks. I mean, if you've seen him in Villanova, you've seen him against the uh, for the Dallas Mavericks last playoffs, and now you're seeing him with the New York Knicks. I mean, it was a signing that was, uh, let's say, very scrutinized over the offseason, whether you start with uh, the, the, the tampering allegations for the New York Knicks that they had to give up a pick for and pay some money for. If you remember the Knicks and Julius Randle and Leon Rowe and everybody uh, showing up to that Mavericks playoff game that Jalen Brunson was playing in, uh, it, it looks like he's been worth everything and more for a franchise that has needed a desperate facelift when it comes to leadership, when it comes to who does what when it comes to closing out games in New York City. There's been countless games, I can tell you, that Knicks fans were either shaking in their boots 
or didn't know what to do when it came to crunch time because not having that steadiness at a position that is so important in the NBA, especially when you're going up against guys like Lillard, Curry, uh, 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 Morant, Harden, Westbrook. Uh, just It's a point guard's league now. And the New York Knicks didn't just get a very good point guard for their team. They got a point guard that fits their identity, okay? Jalen Brunson and his toughness, his headiness, his footwork, his IQ has been something that not only Tom Thibodeau has needed to allegedly save his job, but what the New York Knicks franchise has needed for such a long time, and he continues to dominate over an impressive stretch of basketball he's been playing. 34 points, 11 for 20 from the field, 3 for 4 from three-point line, three rebounds, four assists, but the most important stat for Jalen Brunson is those crunch time buckets when the Indiana Pacers were making it a closer game than it had any business being after being up 25 points. At the end of that game, Jalen Brunson hit clutch bucket after clutch bucket to seal the deal for the New York Knicks. And I think if you're Leon Rose, if you're Tom Thibodeau, if you're just a diehard Knicks fan that has been a fan of this rotation and this team, there was a sequence last night that made you shed a single tear out of your eye when you saw it. As the game was getting real close, as B-holes was getting tight at the very end, as we were starting to get flashbacks to the Milwaukee Bucks game where the New York Knicks blew another 20-plus point lead in an eventual loss against the Milwaukee Bucks. Julius Randle blocks a shot, runs it up the court, gets it to returning R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett pump fakes, drives into the paint, kicks it to a wide-open Jalen Brunson who takes his time, nails a three, and the Knicks don't look back after that. I said it in an earlier show right here on Count It, and I'm going to say it again. The New York Knicks are going to be a problem to deal with this season. I know I might be sounding like a homer. I know we're sounding like we're in New York right now. But they are a top 10 offensive and defensive off, uh, rated team as we currently speak. And let's just talk about the Knicks' last couple of games right now. The Knicks are 4-1 and one in their last five games. But more importantly, they are 3-2 and two in their last five games against the spread. Last night, the Knicks absolutely did cover. Hit that 4.5 point over with that six-point victory, 113-119 against the Indiana Pacers. 14 and 6 in their last road games against the spread, and the totals have gone over in three of their last five games. So the Knicks are scoring a lot of points. The Knicks are getting points from places that they may not expect it from. Guys like Emmanuel Quickly is starting to step up. The returning OB Toppin, for the first time since I want to say early December, the New York Knicks were in full strength and just at the right time as the new year starts. And they start to really see who separates the contenders from the pretenders in the Eastern Conference. Great win for the Knicks. They will be taking on the Washington Wizards tomorrow. I can't wait to check that out because the Wizards have kind of been a Jekyll and Hyde team themselves. But when you're talking about Eastern Conference contenders, you got to start with the current Eastern Conference champions, the Boston Celtics. They took on the New Orleans Pelicans last night, and New Orleans Pelicans shocked a couple players, shot a couple fans last time out when they played the Washington Wizards. No Zion Williamson, no Brandon Ingram. The Wizards were at full strength, and on the, off the back of C.J. McCollum and Jonas Valanciunas, they happened to steal a victory on the road against the Washington Wizards. Now the Boston Celtics, a little bit of a step up in competition, and they found that out very quickly why they are the class of the, of the Eastern Conference. The Celtics, 4-1 in their last five games, just like the New York Knicks, but 2-3 and three in their last five games against the spread. You got to think about that incredibly shocking defeat against the Oklahoma City Thunder a few nights ago with no Shea Gilgis Alexander. And, uh, you know, that kind of messed up a little bit of their numbers against the spread, especially recently. And they're 9-10. and 10 in their road games against the spread. Even though this game was at home, the Stars took care of business against the New Orleans Pelicans. Those impressive wings 
of Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram, you had to understand that guys like Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, they were not going to take no for an answer. They have held down the home court all year long. And even though Jason Tatum has been at the forefront of every MVP conversation, I need to start hearing people being just as loud for Jalen Brown. 41 points last night, 15 for 21 from the field, 3 for 6 from three-point line, 12 rebounds, an absolute monster performance for Jalen Brown. Not to mention Jason Tatum, 31 points, 10 for 22 from the field, 3 for 8 from 3, 10 rebounds, 4 assists. The Celtics covered as well, though. The 9-point spread, 114-125 for the Celtics. A great game for Boston all around. You want to talk about contenders in the Eastern Conference. They feel like they still have that nasty taste in their mouth from last season losing to the Washington Wizards. I mean, when you talk about a team that's just well put together deep, uh, those wings just look like every time out they're giving their 110%. I always look for when you're talking the, when you're when you're looking for fun bets when you're looking for bets that make the most sense uh, going in to the night. A lot of times we've all been burned by those late scratches or those late players not playing or you know those injury reports coming a little too late. The Boston Celtics tried their best, especially their star players, to not have too much load management. So they've been pretty safe to roll with for the past several games, especially Jason Tatum. You want to hear some of Jason Tatum's numbers the past several games in the NBA? I got them right here for you. My goodness. We want to talk about players that have been on an absolute roll the last several games. December 23rd, 30 points. December 25th, 41 points. December 27th, 38 points. 29 points on the 29th, 25 against the Nuggets on the 1st, 27 on the 3rd against the Thunder, 29 against the Mavericks on the 5th, 34 against the Spurs, 32 against the Bulls, 31 against the Pelicans last night. If you're looking for point overs, if you're looking for player props, a lot of times, especially in big marquee games, it is a little, people like to be a little bit hesitant when it comes to betting overs on star players. And the over for Jason Tatum has floated between 28, 29 points for the last several weeks. For as far as teams and players that have been pretty consistent, depending on the matchup, Jason Tatum is as consistent as it gets when it comes to point overs. He's going to get his, whether it's from deep, whether it's from the field, whether it's getting to the free throw line. He has been an absolute stud all season long. Big ups to Jason Tatum. That MVP race is looking like it's going to be one for the books this year because he might be fifth on that list if you're talking about players that have been absolutely killing it this year. But if you're trying to get something in on a daily basis, especially on the points bet app, those three-point props for Jason Tatum, especially when you're playing against a team with a lot of pace, a lot of possessions, he's going to get a lot of those shots up. He is the first option on that team, and they run stuff through him. He doesn't go and just try and get his. Joe Mazzula, shout out to him. He has picked up exactly where Ime Udoka has left off and has made those players a priority, especially when it comes to the offensive end. So shout out Jason Tatum, getting it done for the Boston Celtics, continuing to roll in the Eastern Conference, the conference that used to be called the Leaston Conference for much of my growing up days. But, man, between the Celtics and the Nets, I mean – the Bucks. it's going to be a very, very tough out for anybody in the Eastern Conference. And speaking of the Eastern Conference, what is going on with Giannis Antetokounmpo? What's going on with him? Last night, Giannis, great line if you're not looking at points. 18 rebounds, 10 assists, one block for the Greek Freak but only seven points on three of ten shooting. Now, if you're going to get those points against the Atlanta Hawks, I mean, that's a pretty safe bet in my eyes. The Atlanta Hawks are a team, especially without Clint Capella and Trey Young last night. 
are a team that a lot of people probably expect Giannis to just do what he does and dominate in that paint and take those coast-to-coast dunks, get those open threes when he can knock them down, and just absolutely abuse people in the paint. But that's not what happened yesterday. And it's kind of been a disturbing trend when it comes to his points lately. Earlier in the week, nine points and four rebounds against the lowly Charlotte Hornets. Now, in those last three games, you got the Hornets, the Knicks, and the Hawks. The reason why a lot of people absolutely hate betting on the NBA, because things like this you can never truly predict. You look at the Hawks, you look at the Hornets, those are two of the worst defensive teams in the NBA, especially the Charlotte Hornets. To put up nine points and four rebounds, only getting seven shots off against a Charlotte Hornets team who has been a historically bad defense, especially without LaMelo Ball, even though LaMelo Ball is back. And he's not necessarily Ron Artest either. But Giannis's points... Starting to worry me a little bit. However, against the Knicks, a team that is a lot better defensively than both the Hawks and the Hornets, he scores 22 points, 10 rebounds, goes 6 for 15 from the field, takes more shots, gets more shots. It's awkward. That it's not like he's in foul trouble. He's played 35 minutes, 36 minutes in those games, respectively, against the Hawks and Knicks. But the point totals have been a little concerning for Giannis. I mean, I felt like last night was going to be a perfect game. For him to break out, especially with no Clint Capella, especially with no Trey Young, for him to really carry the offensive load. But even though they they pulled it back and, and made it a win, it wasn't really on the shooting part of Giannis Antetokounmpo. I don't know what's wrong with him lately, but he's still making up for it in rebounds and assists and getting his players involved and his teammates involved, and they still just find ways to win games, you know? But Giannis in particular, we're talking about the MVP race. We're talking about getting you some good money, especially on teams that he dominates. I love players that play every game, just like I said about the the Celtics and load management. You know Giannis is suiting up every single time out, and you know he's not coasting when he plays. There's not a lot of people that play with as much energy and plays with enough intensity like Giannis does. He's almost like a seven-foot Russell Westbrook. You know he's not going to take a playoff. So the fact that he only got up 10 shots against an Atlanta Hawks team that were without their defensive anchor and without their biggest offensive weapon in Trey Young may raise a few eyebrows around the league. I still think Giannis is going to break out sooner or later, but if he has another game where he doesn't score that many points, it's going to be a little strange for me. Drew Holiday, Brooke Lopez, great game for those guys. They hold off the Hawks. They hold on to a win, 114-105. Another strong game for Drew Holiday. Really put it on the Knicks in the garden, especially in the close the closing uh, moments with those step-back threes. And a lot of that happened again last night. Also, Brooke Lopez, who seems to be like an ageless wonder. He feels like he's had three careers at this point, right? Like, he, he killed it early in his career. He killed it for the former New Jersey, now Brooklyn Nets, and now he's found a third life as a a, a contributing member in the Eastern Conference staple, a team that will definitely have something to say with who holds up the Larry OB at the end of this year. That's what I got for last night's slate in the NBA. Don't go anywhere. You know who's joining me to get you on board with all the top props. The prop queen herself, Ariel Epstein, will be joining me on Count It. Don't go nowhere. More Count It right after this break. Welcome back to Count It right here on Points Bet USA. You see the brand new graphics. You see who I'm here with. The only person you need to talk to if you're hitting the props tonight on Points Bet is the prop queen herself, the one and only Ariel Epstein. How you doing, Ariel? I'm great. Glad that it's not yesterday anymore. Yesterday in the NBA was absolutely disgusting. Let's never <laughs> talk about it again. It was just like a like a bad piece of food. Just crumple it up, throw it in the garbage, act like you never ate it. Ariel, it is a bunch of incredible incredible games on the slate tonight 
Love talking to you because your insight, the, the 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 studying that you do, the preparation, the props that you find that may not be as easy to find, you always grab them. So let's go through the slate of games. You ready? Ready. Let's get to it. Tonight, Dallas Mavericks, Los Angeles Lakers, Luka, LeBron, hopefully. If he's not a late scratch like last time, uh, <laughs> let's talk about it. What's the top prop for you for tonight's Mavs and Lakers game? I'm looking on both sides. Let's start with the one that people will be looking at. Probably most of the public will love the over 32 and a half points for LeBron James. Mm -hmm. LeBron James is 35 points away from 38,000. That gets him about 337 points closer to the record all-time Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That is phenomenal math, by the way. I would never remember that. Well, luckily it was a round number. I can't do it. From where LeBron's at now, 35 points away, I could not do that math. But you hit 38K, it's a round number. I can add to 387. LeBron only needs 35. Why not do it on the big stage against the Dallas Mavericks and Luka Doncic? when you're prop 32 and a half. Now, that is nothing to do with normal analysis. It's just the NBA is a very narrative-driven league, especially with narrative-driven players on revenge spots and record-breaking against big teams at big spots on TNT tonight. You also mentioned to me that LeBron James has his movie coming out That's tomorrow. That's right, House Party at Theaters Friday. <laughs> so I love that one for LeBron. Yeah. It's going to be a public play, though. Now, another play that I like on the other side for the Mavericks is their big man, Chris would to go and have a double double against the Lakers in the last 10 games there have been about seven big men I think that are having uh, that had double doubles and they're averaging a double double against the Lakers in the last 10 games whether it's a power forward or a center those big men have been averaging a double double in the last 10 mentioned this last week no Anthony Davis no, no defense, defense. That's what you're going to see Christian Wood take advantage of in this game. I would go take advantage of that plus money with a double-double for Christian Wood, who is really the only big man that this Dallas Mavericks team has. Yeah, I love that pick because the Mavericks get a ton of shots up, and the Lakers aren't necessarily the fastest team in the league, so that's lots of possessions, lots of shots, and not a whole lot of running if you're Los Angeles. So hopefully... Their idea there is getting some long rebounds, getting out on the break. That Christian Wood prop for a double-double looks pretty good if the Mavericks continue on the pace that they play and if LeBron Westbrook are getting those long rebounds and getting out in those breaks, there's opportunities for rebounds everywhere, especially a Mavericks team who does not have that much uh, presence with big men in the middle. Let's talk about another game tonight on the slate. The Oklahoma City Thunder taking on the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, you talked about narrative-driven games, and I was saying, like, is this is this still a revenge game? Like, it's been a while since James Harden's been in Oklahoma City, but he's been playing pretty well. He's had triple doubles in uh, two of his last games. He's been looking pretty good. What's your top prop for tonight with Oklahoma City Thunder taking on the uh, Philadelphia 76ers? Top prop tonight is for the shooting guard, James Harden, of the mm. Sixers, to go over his 37.5 points, rebounds, plus assists. You mentioned the triple-double. That's why I'm looking towards combining all three of them, because Harden can go off in any of those statistical categories. He's got an Oklahoma City team who's bottom 10 against points allowed, bottom 10 in rebounds allowed. I looked at the last 10 games, and shooting guards have had a lot of success recently against Oklahoma City. It's not necessarily a spot I'd call a revenge game. However, when I did look back at the numbers for James Harden against his former team, Oklahoma City, the team that drafted him, he played his first two years of his career there, he still averages about 25 points a game. He averages, I'm trying to get these numbers in my head, six rebounds and eight assists. That's over this number of 37 and a half. That combined, his average against Oklahoma City in his last three, four years playing is about 40 points, rebounds, and assists combined. That's why I like this over of 37 and a half. Just take any of those categories. He should have double-digit assists. He should have double-digit points. It's also a spot where you get to take advantage of Harden, not really shooting the ball as much recently, yet still averaging 25 and a half points a game, even in the last three, four years against his former team. I'll take that over for a big spot. I think the efficiency with James Harden is what really stood out recently, especially how he's fitting with Joel Embiid, another MVP candidate. Today. You talk about points allowed. Those points are probably going to be allowed in the paint a lot. Yep. Joel Embiid, with that matchup against the Oklahoma City Thunder, 
That is going to be a feast to watch out for. However, I love the pace of this game as well. Tyrese Maxey, another player we can probably watch out for. He's starting to come on strong. A little bit slower since the injury, but in the last couple of games, he's starting to get back into that 20-point-per-game mindset that he has uh, over his career so far. Really emerging star for the Philadelphia 76ers. Really like that game in the Wells Fargo Center tonight. Let's keep it going. Cavs, Blazers, marquee matchup on the slate. Two incredible guards in Donovan Mitchell, Damian Lillard. The Sixers, I mean, the Cavaliers have been one of the surprises of the Eastern Conference. The Portland Trail Blazers have played pretty well recently, have been floating, have been in that mix of top teams in the Western Conference. What's it look like for you tonight? I've got one on each side in this one also. First, let's start with the Portland side, where I like Anthony's, Anthony Simons to have over three and a half three-pointers made. Usually hate this market, yet the Cavaliers <laughs> do allow for top 10 highest three-point percentage to their opponents. Simons is one of the leaders on this Portland team in regards to three-point shooting. He's been shooting the three even better than... Damian Lillard has yeah. now overall in the season that might be a different story however when against defenses that are bottom 10 in three points allowed Simons has done better than Lillard and in 60 percent of his games against those teams he has gone over three and a half three pointers made especially at home that three point prop or the three pointers made goes up from Simons from 3.7 to 4.1 He's hitting more threes at home. Go take this over for Simons. Now, on the other side, you've got the Cavs big man, Jared Allen. Against Portland, he's averaging about 17 points a game, close to 10 rebounds, and that's since 2019. Portland is a team that is bottom 10 in points allowed in the paint, and Allen is crushing those defenses that are bottom 10 in points allowed in the paint, averaging a double-double. So I like Allen to go over, whether it's a double-double, but I would probably go over on points for Allen tonight, considering his points perhaps only 12 and a half, and he's averaging about 20 points a game against teams that are bottom 10 in points allowed in the paint. The number may be low because he only played seven minutes mm. in his last game because of a stomach bug. Told that it was just a stomach bug back in Utah. Should be okay to go tonight. As long as Allen's in the lineup, I think that he has a big game tonight. Anthony Simons has been an absolute gem for the Portland Trailblazers. A couple up and down years for them, especially with Dame Lillard's injury and just kind of seeing where that franchise is going. Dame has stayed loyal to his team, and he's been rewarded with another rising star on his Ever team. Ever since that three-point contest, Simons, I just I love it. He has been an absolute flamethrower for the Portland Trailblazers, so I love that pick as well. Anthony Simons, one of the rising stars in the NBA. We talked about the slate, so give me a same-game parlay for tonight's Thursday night games. Oh, same-game parlays, you continue to kill me. So please, <laughs> I just want to let everybody know. Same game parlays are fun. They are not <laughs> meant to be profitable. I know people feel they are in the long run. They are not. This is a fun prop. I like to go to either one or two ways. You can take everything I mentioned in the Lakers Mavericks game because it is the TNT late game. You want to have some wine, a beer, and watch this late game while you go to bed. Sure. Then you could go with LeBron over on his points prop. You can hit that double-double for Christian Wood, and you could take the over in the game. There's going to be a lot of points scored. I like the over in Lakers and Mavs. Defense doesn't exist on the Lakers without AD, and the Mavericks are just going to look for Luka Doncic to absolutely destroy this terrible Lakers defense. And LeBron having his mission of getting to 38K. I would parlay any of that combination. You could even go over 30 points for LeBron, over 30 points for Luka, double-double. But to be honest with you, if you don't want to be absolutely crazy, just go find a double-double prop that you like and bet it with a side in the game. My favorite thing in that prop, it's not going to be – or in that game, it's not going to be as big of a payout. You're not going to get this 8-1, to 10-1 to <laughs> crazy payout. You can go get the wood double-double, hit the over in the game, and then get that for about three to one. It's fine. You don't need to make a million dollars every night. You <laughs> likely aren't going to hit a 10 to one parlay at night. So please, people, stop getting mad at me on Twitter because I'm not hitting five leg parlays. <laughs> not realistic. Just bet props individually. But if you like a same game parlay, then go bet a double double prop with the side. She knows what she's talking about, people. It's supposed to be fun, okay? And if this hits, we're calling this the house party parlay, all right? Woo, woo. So <laughs> shout out, shout out to my folks at Spring Hill Company. Congrats on a new movie by the way what's your best bet for tonight's thursday night slate 
As long as the center for the Cavs, Jared Allen, plays tonight and he's healthy, which he should be, hopefully, if he's over this stomach bug. I love his over on points of 12 and a half points. This number is way too low. He's averaging 20 points a game against teams that are bottom 10 in points allowed in the paint, just like his opponent Portland is tonight. He's a big man that Portland's not going to be able to really defend. They don't have many people to throw at him, plus Evan Mobley at the same time. Go bet this over 12 and a half points on Jared Allen. There's nothing like kicking it with the prop queen right here, especially on the NBA slate. Ariel, thank you so much for kicking it with us right here on Count It. Don't go anywhere, people. You're about to get my picks for tonight's Thursday Night Slate before we wrap it up on today's episode of Count It. Don't go nowhere. More show right after the break. Welcome back to Count It. It's your boy, Kazim Fami Wide. You know what time it is. Let's take a look at that Thursday Night Slate in the National Basketball Association. First off, the Boston Celtics visit Brooklyn as the Nets take on the top team in the Eastern Conference. Their first game without Kevin Durant, and boy, it is a doozy. The Celtics open up three-point favorites against the Brooklyn Nets, and uh, to be quite frank, the Brooklyn Nets have not been good without Kevin Durant. Last year, they went 8-16 and 16 when KD had a sprained MCL and missed a bunch of games. I like the Boston Celtics tonight. They are at home, the Brooklyn Nets, so I expect role players to step up and play well, specifically guys like Seth Curry, Yuta Watanabe, Nick Claxton, and Ben Simmons. Kyrie Irving still got a lot of people over in that Boston Celtics locker room that he's probably got a lot of respect for, but the Celtics are working like a well-oiled machine right now. Give me the Celtics. Take the over. Uh, it's really tough to start off a bunch of games without your best player and MVP candidate in Kevin Durant and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown playing as good as any duo in the NBA this year. It's a TNT game. I like the Celtics to turn it on against Brooklyn tonight. Other game on the schedule, the Milwaukee Bucks taking on the Miami Heat. I said earlier in the in this show what the hell is going on with Giannis Antetokounmpo and these low-scoring affairs? Well, turns out tonight Giannis has been ruled out uh, with, so with knee soreness, so he will not be playing today. At the moment, the Heat are four-point favorites at home. I'm sure that line is going to move very quickly. Uh, but as far as points are concerned, take the under. The Heat are the slowest lowest paced team in the NBA. They don't score a lot of points. No Giannis for the Milwaukee Bucks. Bucks, they're not going to score a whole lot of points or they're not going to push the pace at all. I'm sure uh, Brooke Lopez will play well. Drew Holiday, even when he does play well, it's at a slower pace. They're both very methodical teams. This game is screaming for you to take the under on points total. Uh, especially with no Giannis uh, playing tonight against Miami. So take that under against the Heat and the Milwaukee Bucks. The second national TV game tonight on TNT, it's a house party special. The Dallas Mavericks taking on the Los Angeles Lakers. Expect a whole lot of offense. It's TNT. It's Thursday night. It's LeBron James. It's Luka Doncic. It is going to be no defense play tonight. It's going to be lots of overs hitting, lots of points being scored. The Mavericks shoot a lot of threes, get up a lot of threes, and they play at a fast pace. The Los Angeles Lakers, however, play zero defense. They want to score. LeBron wants to get the ball, run, get it to shooters. I think guys like Dennis Schroeder have been stepping up in his absence. He's going to play well tonight. Take the over on those points. Expect lots of offense tonight, especially with LeBron James being ever so close to the 38,000-point mark, cl climbing closer and inching slower to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to eventually becoming the number one all-time leading scorer in NBA history. And the dude's got a movie coming out Friday, so you know he's going to want to put on and do the best he can to promote that flick this Friday dropping. Shout-out to everybody that worked on the house party. Take the over on points with the Lakers and the Dallas Mavericks. Another game tonight. 
the Cleveland Cavaliers visit the Portland Trail Blazers. I love Dame Dalla at home. He's been playing well, 30 points plus in his last two games. However, he has struggled from three against the last two games between the Orlando Magic and the Toronto Raptors. The Magic and the Raptors, very long, very rangy on the wings. Lots of 6'9", 6'10", guys that are nothing but arms and legs over there, you know? So him struggling from three was not necessarily a surprise. He might be able to get off tonight against the Cleveland Cavaliers, a team that has played very well this season. The Blazers have sputtered a little bit after a hot start, but they're going to need guys like Anthony Simons and Dame Lillard to get off when it comes to being competitive in this game. I do like the Cavaliers to win. However, take Dame Dollar three-pointers tonight. That short backcourt of the Cleveland Cavaliers, as good as Donovan Mitchell is, as good as Darius Garland is, if he plays tonight – uh, there's lots of opportunities for guys like Anthony Simons and Dame Lillard to shoot it and knock him down from three. Take the over on threes for Dame Lillard tonight. I think he's going to get off and continue on his hot streak of 30-point uh, uh, scoring games uh, against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And last but certainly not least, the Philadelphia 76ers at home against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Ten-point favorites against the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's a lot of points. And the Thunder are young. They're scrappy. They are not just your kids' Thunder anymore. They have won 18 games this year. Ten points is a lot of points for that spread. And uh, they are 4-1. and one in their last five games against their spread, and 11-8 and eight in their road games against the spread. So I do like the Sixers to win this game, but I think the Thunder will make it competitive. We all know what Shea Gilders Alexander brings to the table. We all know what Josh Giddy brings to the table. Not necessarily a revenge game since it's in the Wells Fargo Center, but James Harden's had triple doubles earlier this week. He's played well, and there's absolutely no answer for Joel Embiid in the NBA, but especially when it comes to the Oklahoma City Thunder in that middle. I expect Joel Embiid to go off, but I do think the Thunder will keep it close, but the Sixers will eventually pull away. That's it for today's episode of Count It right here on Points Bet. My name is Kazim Famiwide. Thank you so much to the prop queen, Ariel Epstein, for joining me here today. You know where to catch me each and every day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, right here in the Points Bet studio talking all things hoops. You know what it is. It's Thursday. Enjoy the games. Have fun. Happy betting. And we'll catch you tomorrow. Peace out. Later. More, more, more.